Someone has uh, asked me before because we, uh, we have been doing uh, Nehemiah teams. We did church planting for 15 years in uh, Agusan River Valley, sa Bukid sa Butuan. And uh, from that, we began to use students until 2004. We started a mission organization that we call Nehemiah Teams. And some have asked me, can 52 days really change the world? I think if you ask Nehemiah, he would say yes. God used Nehemiah and the people of Israel used his leadership to rebuild the wall in Jerusalem in 52 days. God did amazing things in a short amount of time. God, God through Nehemiah, rebuilt the wall and a revival began in the nation of Israel to rebuild the nation of Israel. And we really believe that in that same way that God is using young people and specifically Filipino young people to, in a short amount of time, not quite 52 days, but to uh, take his word to the unreached and hard to reach and to also in the process to change their lives also. We had a team several years ago that was in a uh, very far village up in uh, Wariwari area in eastern Samar. We began to send teams over there several years ago in eastern Samar. There are three rivers over there and uh, among 80,000 people maybe. And at that time, uh, hardly any evangelical churches at all. But one of the teams, this happened to be an American team and Filipino team together. They were there for 50 plus days. Well, they were at a very far village, and while they were there, they heard of another village that uh, they needed to go to. But uh, they were warned, Siguro uh, delicado, you maybe do not need to go there because uh, um, all of them are either sympathizers of... Uh, NPA or they're part of NPA. And so the Filipinos told me later, they said, Kuya, they said, we were really afraid. And they could not, there's no signal there. They could not get on the phone and ask advice from us. And so they said, Kuya, you know what we did? We prayed. We, we prayed that night. We split up. We got in pairs and we prayed. And the next morning, they said, we came together. They said, okay, what has God said to us? And this is what they said. They said, if we do not go... Who will go? And if we do not go now, when will someone come back to this remote place? And so they begin to hike in. And the Filipinos told me, they said, we were, we were really afraid, Kuya. And they went to this village and they went house to house. They stayed for two days. They went to all of the houses. They shared their testimony. They shared the gospel. At the end of the two days, they had a drama presentation. Again, they presented the gospel. They gave an invitation. Seventeen people in that village came forward. They said, we want to follow Christ. When the team began to leave, they said, thank you for not being afraid to come. Thank you for coming and sharing with us this good news. Amen? Amen? We had a team last year, a Filipino uh, Nehemiah team that went to a uh, Muslim community. And the first few days that they were there, three weeks that they were there, the first few days that they were there, God opened the heart of a 93-year-old woman, Muslim woman. And According to their testimony, because she was so old that uh, the, the community respected her, she went around with the team and they shared, they shared the gospel all over the village. At the end of the time, this 93-year-old woman accepted Christ, followed Isa al-Masi, and she also had an older sister. Grabi, no? I did not know that there were that many old people. And 95, 96... Because of the witness of young people 16 years old to 30 years old, now there is a church in that Muslim village. Amen? God can change the world in a short amount of time through people who are willing to give their all to Him. Amen? God is using young people. Since 2004, there have been uh, 
mga 2,600 go through Nehemiah teams uh, on about uh, 520 teams. 800 of those, 2,600, have been Filipinos. There have been 800 of our Southern Baptist young people who have gone out on among a 200 teams to places like Sikihor, to places like Basilan, to places in South Cotabato, to, to Muslim communities, to uh, tribal people, you know, uh, to Kamigan, to Palawan, to Agotaya, to Maranduki, to uh, Batangas, to Bicol, all over the Philippines. What we did back several years ago is take the map that showed red where all of the pocket places of lostness and unreached people groups, and we begin to pray, God, send us young people. Help us to mobilize young people that will do something now for a short amount of time. I do not believe that the world will be reached by short-termers. I am a long-term missionary. And we have invested our life here in your country. And, and we love your country. And we believe that the world will be reached, unreached people groups will be reached by long-term missionaries. People who are willing to go and learn the language and stay long enough that the gospel can be planted. But God can use short-term teams if they are done strategically. And what we're trying to do with Nehemiah teams is send young people strategically into places to share the gospel. But in that process, we have, we have four things we want to see that every young people uh, that comes through Nehemiah teams uh, that will happen in their life. One is that they would be involved in church planting. This is not a glorified vacation. This is not just an um, exposure trip. This is, they're going to do ministry. They're going to share the gospel. And so we want them to be strategically involved. Secondly, we want to help them to grow. If, if your young people come on Nehemiah teams, they will have quiet time guide. So many Filipinos have come to us after Nehemiah teams, and they said, the one thing that impacted me uh, uh, as much as sharing the gospel, they said, is now I have my quiet time. All of the time. Before I came on Nehemiah teams, I really never had personal quiet time. They read the book of Acts. They memorize 26 verses. Uh, and we want to help them grow. Thirdly, we want them to, to become what we call a global or a worldly, uh, or not a worldly, no, a world Christian. Someone who uh, has a global view. They're not just concerned about uh, their own uh, tribe or their own language. And so they read articles while they are on Nehemiah teams. And, and what we're seeing God use this is as they're going, as they're reading the book of Acts, as they're memorizing verses, as they're reading these articles, how to become a world Christian, it, God is impacting them. And with the Americans, with the Filipinos who have gone through Nehemiah teams, then they come. The fourth thing, we want them to deal with a mission calling. We, we want to challenge them. We tell them that, that, that we are going to ask them to make a decision that because we are all obligated, responsibly kita, to finish the great Commission, And so after it's over, we bring them back together and we say, okay, what will you do? You went to an unreached people group. But listen, there are 2,000 plus unreached people groups. What will you do with the rest of your life? And we give them opportunity to respond, to make a decision of saying, yes, I am ready right now to commit myself to be a long-term missionary. Uh, we are mainly working with Southern Baptist. Uh, Brother Jimmy, our prayer is that we can raise up uh, hundreds and thousands of Filipinos that will be our future long-term missionaries going out from Southern Baptist. That's been our prayer since 2004. And God is beginning to bring us more. Since 2004, every of the 800 Filipinos of the uh, 1,500 1,500 plus Americans who have come through Nehemiah teams, over 50% have said, yes, I, I hear God calling me to be a long-term missionary. Will, will all of them follow through? Probably not. But, but we, have, we feel a great 
responsibility and burden to continue to nurture them to a long-term commitment to finish the Great Commission. Here in the Philippines, um, in 2004, we began uh, in Butuan City. We had a one orientation. We began to see that we could not really mobilize all of the Philippines if everyone had to go to Butuan. So we began to do what uh, a pastor suggested to me. We began to franchise Nehemiah teams. We presently have nine franchises all over the Philippines. You can look on our website and find uh, this April and May and then some, and some franchises, June and July, we have teams going out all over. They will go to the local franchise, they will be trained, then they will go out for uh, three weeks, four weeks, and come back. And you can look at that. About six years ago, we began to see the need to increase our leadership base among Filipinos. Because it is our prayer and it is our goal to set up a network of Nehemiah teams all across Asia. We have begun to do this. We've begun to step out. But we began a training um, about six years ago. This will be our sixth year starting this month. A training that we call AOT. It's an Advanced Operations Training. It is 11-week discipleship mission training. And it is our goal through this that church planters will come out and we have seen Filipinos come out of this training and go straight into church planting. It's our goal that, uh, that Filipinos will come out and will do what some are already doing. Uh, this past year, 2016, we had a young person from Butuan uh, go to Nepal for two months to work with the Nepal Baptist young people, helping them. We call, we call them a field coach. And this uh, Filipino helped them to set up their own Nehemiah teams so that, so that uh, Nepalese, the Nepal young people, then are mobilizing and training and sending out their own young people to unreached people groups. Right now, as a follow-up, we have another young person from Butuan who is staying there for six months. Uh, he is working alongside the, the leaders of Nepal Baptist Convention young people, and he's helping them, assisting them in, in strengthening and moving forward with their Nehemiah teams. They will have two teams go out uh, next month in Nepal, Nepalese going into areas. Nepal is one of the most unreached uh, countries in the world, 240 plus unreached people groups in Nepal only. So it is our goal and it is our prayer that through uh, AOT training and through Nehemiah teams, we can raise up many uh, cross-cultural long-term missionaries. It's our prayer that over the next uh, three to five years, we will have at least 20 that will be out across Southeast Asia and in South Asia that will be uh, field coaches that will be maybe coming alongside some other church planters and helping them do that. Um, in your, um, before I show a video to close with and, and have some questions, uh, most of the pews where you are sitting, you have some information. I want you to be sure and take notice, especially of contact card. We would like to know who you are and if there's some way that we could uh, partner with you or you could partner with us. Please fill that out and return that to us. You may also have this in your pew. If you do not, we can give you one. It's general information about Nehemiah teams. This is also about uh, our longer training, AOT. Please send your young people to us uh, so that we can train them in the discipleship mission training that we're doing. And this also, you some of the, the seats that you have, it's just a story about what God is doing. So let's show the video now, and then I will take some questions from you. If nobody will go to their place, how will they have the chance to experience the joy that you are experiencing, the peace that... God has given you, the forgiveness of sins that you know that you have. Courage follows when faith takes the lead. 
you know in your heart that it is clear to you that God is telling you to go or you understand God's command and going, what still keeps you from believing that He can do what you think is impossible? God does not call the equipped. He equips the called. We just need to respond and everything will be taken care of. You know the truth. You know the salvation. Would you be that selfish not to share it to others? If God gives so much value for the soul of one people, then you also give value to them. Nehemiah teams an opportunity to share the gospel, so I hope you would take this opportunity to go to the people, hard to reach and unrich people, just share the gospel and show them how God loves them.